Welcome into K State Online. It's another commitment for K State, and I mean, not to steal the the shine of what we're here for the main event of a new player, but we should probably mention that uh, K State already added another player, somewhat out of the transfer portal earlier today. Malcolm Alcorn Crowder, a defensive lineman, back in the fold. He was a part of the 2024 recruiting class because he was a JUCO player from Butler, was really a big get for K-State, a top five JUCO player, according to On3, four-star status, and he wasn't going to make it to K-State. Some things changed with the situation. Well, they've changed back, and he has reaffirmed, hey, I'm coming to Manhattan, and this, we'll talk about this real quick before we get into Alec Marenko, because this is a really big deal for a team that needed defensive line depth. Yeah, th- this is a huge addition for K-State needing defensive line depth and specifically defensive tackle. I think that Alcorn Crowder is somebody that's probably going to play more D-tackle. I don't think that this deters K-State from going after more guys in the transfer portal that play D-tackle just because it's such a highly position of need. And, and to be honest, uh, again, it's Scott Wildcat all over it comparing uh, how center is in basketball to D-tackle in the football transfer portal where everybody needs one. So if you can find one and even find two, I know that uh, Carlos Allen from Kennesaw State's another one to mention, that that's, some, that's something that you need to explore because you need big bodies, and Malcolm or Alcorn Crowder can do that. He can play a little heavy defensive end if you need. Uh, he just provides a lot of flexibility to a team that needs it on the defensive line. I really like what they have at defensive end. Probably need a little bit more at D-tackle, so I think that it's a huge addition. But like you said, it's not really an addition, but it kind of is at the same time. It's one of those where it's uh, it's an interesting case because it's it's like you said, uh, it's kind of like Reggie Stubblefield where committed, then wasn't, and then is committed again. So does, does this really count as another addition? I, I don't know. You can debate that if you want, but... It's big nonetheless because it's yeah. it, it's a huge, huge name for Casey to bring back. Yeah, I, I don't know that you throw it in the same pile as commitments, but it's certainly an addition of a player that you didn't think you were going to have, and it certainly comes at a position of need. Now, the main reason why we are here is because K-State has gotten a fresh commitment from the transfer portal, and it also comes at a position of need. Alec Marenko, a linebacker from New Mexico, is on board. He was the leading tackler last season for the Lobos. And we talked about it a couple weeks ago when we were discussing, hey, who are some of the targets in the transfer portal? He's about as good as you can get, especially at this position in the portal come this time of year. So what's the the book on Alec Marenko coming to K-State? Yeah, it's a it's a big addition because K-State needed probably a, a Mike linebacker more than either of the other positions at linebacker, just with Jake Clifton probably leaving to take a mission. Austin Romain still a younger player. Terry Kirksey still a little bit away from being able to contribute. Bo Palmer is kind of just what he is at this point. And Bo Palmer was good at times last year, but you probably didn't feel comfortable if your top two is going to be Austin Romain and Bo Palmer. So to get Marenko is a huge addition because it, it was probably the one piece on the defense that you probably felt the most uneasy about. I know that I talked about how D-tackle was a position of need, but you at least felt comfortable with who you were starting with, Uso Samalo. But now at the Mike linebacker spot, it was just a question mark on how it was going to go, who was going to start. But Marenko brings a lot of experience for your player at New Mexico, team leader in tackles. It was also a team captain last year for New Mexico. And, and I think that he just provides like a, a stable force at, at the Mike linebacker where you feel more comfortable now with the defense because I think that this defense has a chance to be pretty special. Yeah, no, no doubt about it. And we, we've talked a lot about, hey, we know that this team has some pieces. It seems like it's going to all come together, but you got to make sure that you can build some depth and there are some notable questions. Defensive tackle is one. K-State obviously kind of gets a boost to that today. Linebacker, another one that they get a boost to. And we, you know, we've talked a little bit about the Marenko thing specifically. And I think some people are kind of like, eh, you know, what what does this really mean? This to me profiles as the type of guy like, hey, we're we're aware of him, whatever the situation is, and then he gets out there 
and he's just a stalwart in making plays this coming season for K-State. And we know that this staff has been really, really good when it comes to defensive transfers. Yeah, this is the kind of transfer that K-State has gotten recently where you think, huh, I probably should have been higher on him beforehand because he the stats don't necessarily blow you away, though he led New Mexico in tackles, but it's something where you see a player at a lower level transfer up and you're like, how is this going to translate? And then all of a sudden they're a very solid player for K-State. Uh, I will say that it is interesting to point out that number one, K-State beat Arizona and Auburn and another SEC school and another Big Ten school for Marenko. But it's also interesting to point out too that uh, with Elijah Herring and Alec Marenko, I know that there was a lot of talk about Herring, that a lot of teams were actually more or were higher on Marenko than Herring that were going after both. I know that Arizona, for example, chose to go after Marenko instead of Herring because they thought that Marenko was a better player. Well, I, you know, I'm going through here and, and kind of looking around at, at how it works out. The interesting thing about a guy like Marenko is, you know, you, you can see if you're watching on, on the YouTube down there that it shows the, the rating that is given through the on three industry ranking. He's an 87 in the transfer portal. If you go and look at his high school recruiting profile, he's added over seven points to that total rating. So he's gone up quite a ways. And it when guys are coming from these smaller schools like a New Mexico or somewhere, it's not easy to get that significant bump because I do think at times it's easy for people to just go, okay, you know, the kid's coming from here, uh, give him three stars and just keep him around whatever he was. Marenko got a pretty significant bump in that. And then to add uh, kind of the, the backstory to it of, hey, teams were higher on him than they were a guy like Herring who's in the portal. But I think people would probably be interested to know, like, does the Marenko commitment fully take K-State out of the running for Herring? I, I would probably say yes, just because they both play the Mike linebacker spot and they'd be adding two guys to that position where I, I think that you're more comfortable comfortable with somebody like Austin Roman and Bo Palmer being the backup as opposed to the starter at this point. So I, I think that this was a true kind of like the Devon Booth and Dylan Edwards uh, recruitment where it, it was just first to commit and Alec Marenko was pretty high on K-State. And I had a strong feeling after he visited K-State that he was leaning towards K-State uh, because that's when he uh, said that he wasn't no longer visiting Auburn. But then the the further away that it got, I just thought that Arizona could potentially steal him from K-State because Arizona has a, a few ties to Marenko. Arizona is a lot closer to home because he's from El Paso uh, than K-State is. But it was a good job by K-State again. And it just seems like they're building on momentum. And momentum is a crazy thing in recruiting. All it takes is one, and you see guys start to hop back in. Because if you really want to count Malcolm or Alcorn Crowder to this, this is the fourth commitment to K-State in the last two days. Yeah, K-State's kind of loading up on on guys right now. Uh, we we already have a video up on Weston Polk and obviously on Dylan Edwards. So plenty of football stuff going on for K-State, and the roster is it's getting immediately better. As we talk about, three of those guys are dudes that not only are they going to be on the team this upcoming season, but all of them are probably going to play in some capacity. I mean, Certainly, Marenko and Edwards, you profile as guys that you're going to see a lot. Malcolm Alcorn Crowder, at this point, I think people would probably say that you'll see him a lot. It'll just be interesting to see how he develops once he actually gets in, into Manhattan and, and with the team. But it's been a really good two days on the recruiting trail for K-State in terms of making their roster better immediately. Yeah, and I think that that's kind of... I know that I've been talking about when is the dam going to break. I think that we're kind of in the position now where the dam is starting to break and you're starting to see a lot more prospects in both the transfer portal for football and on the high school rankings kind of take notice. I mean, uh, another thing to kind of point out here is that, I know this is a transfer video, but there was a lot of 2025 prospects that were super excited that K-State got Dylan Edwards and were liking the tweets. So I think that you're starting to see K-State build this momentum. And I think that Alec Marenko could be the next defensive transfer to really stand out for K-State because it, it seems like they're batting a thousand on these defensive transfers that they've brought in. 
Yeah, no, they've they've done a really good job with defensive transfers under Chris Kleiman, and Marenko's another one. And he's going to have the opportunity to really showcase his skills and everything. So K-State adds to the roster in a position of need with a really solid player that was highly sought after from other Power 4 conference teams, and you get a direct head-to-head win with the newcomer to the Big 12, Arizona, who K-State will face in week three of the football season. So that will do it for Drew Galloway and I. We will be back throughout the week with more here on K-State Online. If you want all the news you can get on K-State football and basketball as well as recruiting, go to On3. Find K-State Online. We'll be over there. Have plenty of info for you. And every single day, we'll have something here on the KSO YouTube and podcast platform. So for Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth. We're out of here. Thanks for watching.